Hello, greetings, welcome. Uh, short video, a bit of a grand tour. Um, as many uh, have watched my other videos will know, um, this account is a new account in order to show things from meager beginnings onward. And we've kind of done the meager beginnings bit. Um, but this is um, a map that is possessed by my partner in crime um, that I've been working on with my usual account which kind of shows off um, the sort of things that this uh, series of videos is going to be working towards so yeah when I have often referred to my normal account this here was built by my normal account with the help of Battle Mistress. So we are on a random gen map. This isn't where we started, it's actually many miles from where we started. But we have travelled to this city. I'm trying not to look up right now because um, I want to first show this building. We found ourselves under attack from ferals and bears and all sorts very early on in this city. Uh, so we sought refuge on the roof of this and uh, you know we tried to put stuff up to stop spiders climbing and block all ways up and stuff um, and initially we just had like a ladder going up the side of the building and stack crates and things and then to make it easier on ourselves we just put up this little rampway standard thing you know two block gap so we can jump across zombies can't we can takes us to the roof it's a bit foggy at the moment so we can't really see too much distance though the fog's lifted a little bit um but yeah i mean the, these trees obviously weren't here because we're in the middle of the city um we just put together a little survival area here and then started building from there um, as you saw at the start of the video, to make it easier to get down, we put some hay bales, and because we don't really want the uh, hay bales getting damaged or destroyed, we floated them on a platform. You've seen this before in my videos. Uh, plates on the ground, then upside down, plates there space in between can be passed through. The zombies tend not to attack up. Um, although I think that's kind of changed a bit with the latest update. This map obviously started before the update so we won't have drawbridges or anything. But um, then we set to the defences. So standard sort of defence fair. We dig a pit. Uh, this pit isn't all the way to bedrock yet. Which is why we still have these crates stacked here. Sorry, these frames stacked here because we're still going down and digging deeper and the uh, kill chambers that would be at the bottom aren't built yet because we're not down there yet um, but this is all stuff that you'll see through this account in the next series of videos um, not being in like the first seven day horde series anymore we won't bore you with w watching the collection of all the materials and stuff that'll be collected off screen and you'll just see the uh, the building so um you know you you won't be watching us digging a deep hole but you will see us do things like lining it with concrete and leaving the gaps and structures and etc in the right places and obviously because that'll be a new map with the new update that one will be able to take advantage of things like the drawbridge so that's the pit and as you would be aware if you've seen my previous video series um, I then tend to float a platform over the pit and then I suspend a central section using the magic of partial blocks as you can see these are not touching but they are actually holding it up and the, you know, these are not touching but they are actually holding that up so 
those plates are holding that up and those plates are holding that up obviously there's a lot of mass to be supported there which is why we have a myriad of plates now you see these ones are still those are concrete those are still reason for that is because these ones are doing the bulk of the work of supporting this section um, these ones are just so that the mobs won't see us when we're on the ground floor so then those ones which are still are actually doing the bulk of supporting that section and then concrete that we'll go inside and look at that but um, on the next level we do have concrete layer then glass layer purely because um, if we put glass there um, the mobs would still be able to see us when we were here um, so that's the the most window we've got on this level then we go up to the next level and we've just gone straight for glass because quite frankly I don't think the mobs are going to be seeing up here so um, storage is a good subject to cover so you know you'll, you'll build your workshop you'll have your mixers and your forges and your workbench and then you'll want storage you'll want to put chests somewhere to store stuff in and um, storage chests the proper storage chests actually have the same um, structural integrity and mass properties of wood reinforced frames or blocks and um, considering the distances being covered here um, I mean basically they have a mass of 6 and uh, structural, in, uh, structural integrity of 36 so you could hang 6 in a horizontal line and if you say you have 6 coming off of there and 6 coming off of there they would overlap which basically means you can span the distance between these walls and still have enough uh, structural integrity left over to have it hold itself up as a ceiling and to be able to place things on it and walk on it as a flooring so yeah what better way to have tons literally tons of storage um, and not have it taking up space really it's not getting in the way it's actually become a ceiling and a floor so yeah that's the workshop area it workshop was deliberately on this level because we want the heat from the forges to be attracting the mobs to the pit so open the trap door we go down they clearly see into the pit and here is the suspended cage basically these steel plates are holding up these bars we can shoot through the bars these steel plates and this ladder are suspended from there and these plates are suspended from those plates which are suspended from these blocks where uh, we've used steel is partially about structural integrity uh, and in some cases it's merely about damage resistance so for example these steel plates here we could have used any material there structural integrity wouldn't have been affected the ones at the bottom here the same wouldn't have been affected but for damage resistance we've used steel anyway uh, these ones here structural integrity is uh, affected because they are actually um, holding these up this whole thing is being held up from these plates which are being held up from the steel blocks above them um, we could steal these in the middle as well uh, it, it would support that mass but it's not really necessary uh, so we've just left those as concrete for now so then we have our walkway to the next level which is the kitchen level doesn't really serve a purpose other than just having somewhere to put your campfires and 
you know, we have the, the fridge and that, which we don't actually have to use for storage because we've got this floor. But just purely from completing the effect, we've done that. And then, oh, hello. Say hello. Hello. Everybody wave. It would be nice if I could actually get that hand to wave, wouldn't it? I would like swing something to make it wave, but I don't want to hit something. Right, so <laughs> we uh, come up to the next level, and uh, this is the living room. Now, unfortunately, um, we we took down a large screen and went went to put it up, and it just became two small screens side by side. So that kind of sucks. But yeah, and, you know, we've got our sofa and a couple of coffee tables and a desk, etc. Again, it's just for appearance sakes, but. Um, that's half the game, isn't it? Yeah. Half the game. Uh, yeah, yeah, it would be great if you could actually just sit down on the sofa, look at your in-game pretend TVs, and actually, I don't know, watch your Blu-ray collection on the in-game TVs or something. Um, complete waste of time, but, you know, sometimes that's the fun, isn't it? Just complete waste of time just for fun. So this is the bedroom level, bed, really need to clean those sheets, it looks like the kids have been jumping on it, uh, bedside lamps, tables, wardrobes, so as we get up here you'll see those plates are not steel anymore, we've just gone, only gone as far as concrete because quite frankly they don't really need the damage resistance up here. But those ones which are mass supporting those are still steel 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 well, still steel and then we come to the top level top level where we've made a little roof garden we've planted ourselves a crop of corn so then we found ourselves at the point where we have that original building that we were surviving on uh, as you can see we planted trees on the roof because originally we just wanted to be able to chop wood whilst being completely safe. So then Battle Mistress um, asked, well, rather than jumping down and crossing there and maybe having to run from dogs and ferals and stuff, could we have a walkway between there and here? And there was a building, a half broken building there. Um, so that's what we planned to do was to bridge from that building to that building to that building to here so these are our walkways you see the spine of it here has been reinforced with steel just to make sure that if we add anything I mean we've only put lightweight wooden frames uh, wooden railings here for now but in case we added something that maybe weighed a bit more it would still be able to support the weight um, this would be directly under us is a concrete pillar that is supporting the mass and here and there um, so yeah we just reinforce the spine with steel and we come to the top of this building and here we've made ourselves a rooftop garden for our potatoes uh, originally we were growing corn and potatoes over there on the original roof that we were surviving on um, but now after that crop is harvested we'll probably change it to something like golden root or some other crop so um, again one of battle mistress's suggestions was to have this like pathway through the rooftop garden with the railings on the side with the railings on the side yes we've left that at wood not because of the sake of saving mass um, but just because wood looks nicer in a rooftop garden it's more organic and then that takes us back to the original building that we were surviving on so yeah, you get to watch us jump off for a third time Wee. And going back to the whole floating things technique, these supports for the bridge, as you can see, are floating. Um, 
this we will probably upgrade to steel for damage resistance that I already have those two I probably will these haven't at all but I will do and the same over here these ones supporting that part of the bridge and uh, I guess we have to go around because that's been blocked off now more floating sections here supporting the roof garden up there uh, made all of that steel uh, because obviously it's not just supporting its own weight but it's also supporting the weight of the garden on top of that um, anything else we might want to add we already know that we can support the weight in advance so yeah I mean if any zombies did start mashing down on this stuff hopefully there's enough of it so that it will stay up long enough for us to detect damage and come repair it uh, I guess if this wasn't plates if this was just solid all the way down it would have exactly the same damage resistance and any of it getting broken would pose exactly the same amount of danger of collapse so I figure that that's actually quite minimal there's almost no danger at all uh, you, even though you look at it and you think oh surely well they've got to chip that off and it's all going to fall no it, it's as sound as if it was all solid all the way through in fact the only thing that really is a concern is this material here is really brittle really really brittle which is why we've sort of spread these out over a wider area and we've actually got concrete blocks under these as well so as that you know if a cop comes along and explodes and blows out all this brittle stuff that is going to stay put and we have actually had a few instances this large patch of concrete here is the beginning of extending it out from the pit but the reason it's here is because a cop basically exploded here and took everything out down about six layers uh, this patch of green is the same thing been filled in with um, sod I think it was was it sod? That mistress? Yes. Yep, with sod. Yes. Um, and um, this will be replaced with concrete a, as well eventually. Um, but then I'm thinking once we've sort of taken our concrete out to say about here as a perimeter, or maybe just to here because this is the start of the way we're getting in and out, then we'll probably outside of that put down a load of sod because actually I'm quite, quite liking this, uh, this green grassy patch. Um, are hoping that uh, any cops that are going to choose to explode are going to want to be at least this close when they do and not still that far away so that will keep that safe and the concrete and steel will keep this safe uh, yeah I mean the reason for them wanting to be that close is because we are going to be in the cage So looking to the future, the next build, there will be something like this. Um, we will um, be completing, getting all the way down to bedrock and then building uh, a, sp a specific kill chamber down there. Uh, there will also be positions in the lower walls to help us to kill and gather materials from the uh, the deceased zombies. Um, one good thing uh, before we do that, whilst it's still just digging down, is uh, if we just let that fill up with zombies, just let it fill up. They'll tend to stay in the centre if we're like in the centre. You just fire off an explosive, you take out a whole load of them in one go. Very good um, ammunition economy there. So yeah. That that will be uh, the same same ish. Um, now this one I believe is thirteen by thirteen. Um, this part of it here is thirteen by thirteen. Um, I'm thinking we'll do at least fifteen by fifteen, so we can maintain this size of gap and put in more of a uh, an anti spider lip here. Uh, we may even go to 17 by 17 if we can support it 
Um, I'm thinking we can, I'm just going to test the theory first, but if we go to 17 by 17 we can have our anti-spider lip and actually increase the size of this gap because this will be larger, it will be further out, this will be further out. Uh, if we maintain this at the same size then this gap will get that little bit larger. After that we will um, be creating like satellite positions like with this building and that building except rather than just converting buildings we'll be putting in complete sh from new structures we may go for a cross shape so like there'll be one here and uh, one the same distance the other side and the same distance that side and the same distance that side and we'll put rooftop gardens on top uh, for different crops um, with the update we'll actually have access to more types of crop that we can plant but then we could also go for eight locations by putting things in the corners and then bridging across from each we'll certainly like have a, a ring of bridges going around the, the satellite positions uh, we'll have to have at least one bridge going from there to one of the satellite positions uh, but most likely we will do a minimum of two, possibly four. Uh, we're not going to go to all eight, that would just be overkill. But, you know, maybe the four for the cross, or maybe just two running down the middle. And, um, yeah, that's basically what we wanted to show you. Uh, we, we've called this stream Infinite Possibilities, because look what uh, crazy things are possible and we're just going to build upon that anything you want to say before we go about mm, no no okay so there you have it have, have fun and enjoy <laughs> <laughs> and we'll and catch you next time, time you'll die with us <laughs> I, I kind of talked over you a little bit. Do you want to say that again? I said next time you can come die with us. I'm tempted to sing, but I won't. Catch you next time.